Just applying that pressure, falling the first point of contact here with the USP. It's labored, but he does find that headshot eventually. Even maybe getting a reload off. <laughs> this is looking quite good for Fallen. KMG able to provide an additional helping hand there to take down Sunny. And outside is under lock and key for the Brazilians. But look at this. Sergey sneaking through ramp room unspotted. But he does get traded out pretty efficiently if we're fair about it. Only getting that one kill. That's not going to be enough to bring this one back over to their side. As Paco and KNG finish things off. Yeah, it feels really good now for sure. And there's no smoke to come across. And KNG's pretty happy to take the fight, but you can shoot through that. And indeed, he's going to get taken down eventually. But Fallen is doing great work with the scout. He is someone that is so well known for scout shenanigans. And Fur holds down hard as well. Looks like Ends are struggling to get the response that they needed in this round. It's Alu here trying to pave way towards outside, but Fawn's got that scout, and again, he is so deadly with this weapon. He's the classic guy you think about, you think about scouting, and there he is again, the OG scout master. What can he really do? He doesn't have bomb, but it's not long for this world, is he, for finding that one 3 0 start for the Brazilians? There could be two things for them to do at this point. They either go down to secret, or this is all a fake. KNG is about to find out it's not a fake, and the peak, there's the swing. KNG falls back, there's the incendiary. They cannot trade that frag. He at least has this angle somewhat covered, though. There is still players jumping above him that he may not realize just yet. It's going to be X7 and Alu now. He might be hearing the pitter-patter of footsteps on metal, and there you see it. Mayern is certainly prepared for this very attack, but he still doesn't land the shot, and it starts opening up this upper side with Fur. He's certainly up for it. He's found three already. That might be just enough. With the help of Taco, they get the job done. The 5-0 start for Made in Brazil. What ends have available to them? It's basically two options, but we've got a faster one on our hands. Here's the spray through the door. Not going to land too, too much, but enough here to really weaken three players for finishing off one. They know that down the vents has been exposed as Fallen drops down to try to chase. But ends, it's really on them to make the next move here. As Taco looks, anticipates that push that surely must be coming from Rap at some point. Oh, he's so good, isn't he? Taco knows everything. Yeah, it's really tough when you keep suffering the opening blow. I mean, it seems like every round lately, Made in Brazil has gotten the opening kill on <gasps> that very round. Oh, no. And there he is, the jump fall and finding Alu. That's a tough one. That's really starting to crush all the remaining options for Ants. But Ariel does at least find a pick here towards Ramp Room. It gives them some hope, but they're still so far behind. He's repositioned to a very good angle. And that is why he gets some damage. It falls back safely. Flashbang goes out. He wants to peek with the flash. It's a big play. It doesn't work. In fact, maybe Fallen would have wanted to try to delay here because he committed himself, and that's given a chance to Ents. Here come the CTs now, working from both control and decontamination. Making their way forward, Sunny swinging on the side of the smoke up to Ariel now. They've fashioned a 1v1 out of this, which is quite crazy. There's the Molly. Oh, no! Ariel straight past it, and he's going to nail it. Great stuff there from Ariel. Oh Forces his God. way past the Molotov. <laughs> Full buy here still for both teams, though it is a bit limited for Ents. They do have X7 on a Galil. Also an SMG and a FAMAS in play for Made in Brazil, so... Oh my goodness, that's almost a dangerous time there for Taco, but he does escape away from it all. Able to even stand firm with the M4. Oh. There's going to be three kills from Taco, and KNG also chiming in with an op kill. Leaves it all to Sunny. A nice shot on the Taco, but still not long for this world, you'd have to imagine. What a sick hold from Taco. That's so, so insane. And Mayon will finish things off for him. And they're off to a hot start. Into pick is starting to backfire a bit. Fallen now up close. Trying to avoid all the utility, trying to stay alive and buy time. KNG in the meantime. Yeah, this, this is awkward. Like, he, if he could have got that kill, it's all good. But now he's in a tough spot. But luckily, KNG has been handling things quite nicely. Also on the AWP. But Alu does get through, gets that kill, gets the AWP. And Ariel pitches in also. And now we're all even. <laughs> what a timing there on the Fallen. Ends will get that upper bomb site under control. And so, MYBR have just been completely out positioned here. There may not be nothing to do but save the gu uh, their guns at this point. Oh dear, that's a great opening. I was about to say it's looking, it's beginning to look more promising for Ents, but that's certainly a good way to start the round. They have a, an aggressive outside take, so this is actually a problem for, oh, as I say, a problem for Ents, but Alu does actually catch KNG as he backs away. And now Fallen's playing mini, and he's a little bit worried about Squeaky as well. This is a very scary position. He tries to play the advantage of his angle, and it's gonna work out beautifully well. Two quick kills for Fallen, and now it's a 2v4. Ends looked set up for greatness there, but Fallen shuts it down.
Yeah, big individual play there from Fallen, no question. And now Spur might be the final nail in the coffin of this round for the Fins. Indeed, it will be the backstab. It just seems so difficult for Ens to gain traction. So they don't seem to be able to find that momentum. They're going for another fast play down the vent. Again, it's been fairly effective in some of these rounds. Getting play three players that will be able to very quickly dart their way down the vent position. And there is no CT presence on the lower bomb side. They have completely outpositioned NYBR. You see if KNG will hold this position, but there's still so much early utility that can be used to shut down these choke points that KNG has only been opened up to this left eye peak. This is the worst peak of the two. That's why the right side's been smoked. And you want to leave this one open and molly it. We'll get a smoke there. They're, they're swimming in utility, so they're going to shut down any possibility. There's two players that need to make their way across to the side. They can't quite get there. Time is ticking is the really big problem, even though it's like a, one of those weird post-plant five-on-fives. The CTs are just not getting the space they need. Now they're starting to press forward. They need to find these kills quickly. Again, back and forth the round goes, leaving it into a three-on-two when it's all said and done. And very quickly, Sergei stamps things out. So 9-4 is the scoreline. Now again, we're seeing quick outside take from KNG. He's here so fast, they do not expect it. He's only good for one, though. Great conversion from Ents on what could have been a very precarious situation. There's a team kill on all of it, but they still do have a three on two, but low health on a couple of their players, but it may not matter as the kills come in anyhow. 10-5 is how the half closes. It's a very quiet passive dance at the moment from both teams. And they don't have to do anything here, but hold their positions and just respond and respond they will. Ariel, nice first headshot, looking to follow things up though. Will be traded immediately. Great spacing from MIBR as they begin to crunch the upper bomb site. And Sergei go for the chase here, but he's on the reload, blocking his teammate. Very awkward, but still somehow also flawless. So, you know, we'll give it to them. We'll give it to them. Uh, looking for some faster pressure there. They're going to get ahead of it with these SMGs. Very fast movement. It's working out for MYBR as they get some trades into the bomb site. Ali running through the flames. Oh my goodness, he can't quite follow up very quickly. And that will be the end of him. KNG swings through for the trade as well. Back into the lobby position. Yeah, it does not really all that much in the way of good options for Sunny. And he recognizes this as he ambles his way back out of the vent position towards a safe... And they get to slow things down now a little bit. They still have that Mac 10 in hand on Fallen, so that gives him a lot of aggressive options. And well, Kenji's going to go down, it seems. Unfortunate. Seems like it's going to live and die by this play right here, right now. And actually, Alu steps even further forward, Danny. He's looking to go for plays, not just hold the angle. Maybe he's going to catch a timing as well, catching someone trying to run back. The bomb has been tossed down as well because of that action. Finds Mayer and also limited firepower for Ince. It's just two safe rifles, but they're having enough impact, it seems. And here goes for with Taco. Can they cobble something together? Looks like they will be completely denied there. Great headshot from Sergey, and he will finish it off with the Deagle as well. But Ents are playing really tentatively too. They're, they're, they're just doing that really cl very classic passive CT setup on the... Well, if you're Sunny and you have an SG and you know they don't have smokes to cross, that's actually the perfect thing to do is just to sit there long range with it and, and, and force them to, to try to, to dry peek that area. X7 poking and prodding at radio is going to find the kill. KNG click to trade that nade though is going to do severe damage, especially the fall. And he's down to 26 HP. That's not a lot to work with. It's interesting though, because he went for the aggression dust, but at that point, MYBR didn't really have a way to get in anywhere. So, Enz kind of gave him an option to push towards a ramp. Question is what they can do with that though. So there definitely is still a good chance they're going to pull this one off, but time is ticking and they haven't really made any headway just yet. Things are starting to get a little bit scary, you have to feel. KNG spotting out a couple of these players towards the control side. They are pitching in, getting some kills, and it's all falling apart. It's all on Sergey. And he's being held off, and time will actually win the round when it's all said and done. And he won't be able to escape, maybe. It's close, but he does get away. But <laughs> it's still the victory for Aiden Brazil. To, to potentially start climbing again. And here it comes the pressure to the upper bomb site. I love these mollies. It already creates a lot of problems for the site anchor. However, there's no push. Just baiting out that counter utility. You can see a detail here from MIBR. Yeah. They definitely seem to be orchestrating things quite nicely. They're, they're very neat and tidy with all the ways they're approaching things. Definitely the more organized team thus far in this game. Great pick to get early on to get that quick five on four. Now they'll just waltz into a free upper bomb slight save for Sergey, who's standing firm for one, but that's not going to be enough. 
as this bomb does make its way in. Alu does get a parting shot there on his way out of heaven, and now X7 on the flank through lobby actually makes this interesting all of a sudden. It's back into a 2v2, back to a winnable scenario. Time running low. Yeah, that was a great kill. That really does change things. And they will make their final push here to try to save the round, and it's going to work out. Alu picks it up for that. So, I mean, that position is to kind of counter if the T's throw the deep stairs, Molly. You'll be safe in Sunny's position and perhaps not checked for, and you can get a massive, massive multi-kill from that position. So Sunny is very dangerous. If MIBR do press, continue to press outside, but it looks like they are working wraps now. What a pick from Taco. He knows those positions so well as he anchors that on the CT side, and that really pays off that extra knowledge. Absolutely. It's fighting against the set that they have not won any rounds in a row this half thus far. Now they have to do way more than that just to try to survive the map, but it's starting to pile on as Fur finds Sunny between the eyes there to get this into a five versus three. Taco may be low on health, but Made in Brazil still packing a wallop right now with all their players still standing and so much map underneath their control and it might even get worse with this. No, Alu able to at least get one back, but still so many more tasks they must complete to get back into the round. He can work with his teammate, but it doesn't really look like there is anything that they want to entertain here. They both will back away and save the guns instead. Get some information. Now the smoke's come down. Sunny wanting to delay things with the incendiary, and that will allow him to now rotate and have time if they do go quickly. But they're not going too fast. Now he will spot one more outside. Oh god, it's getting so, so close. I don't know if there will be time here. <laughs> they're against the clock more so than they're, they're against Ents at this point. The kills will start to come through there for Ents as they start to desperately push. Very key position here for Sergei. Unable to stop the plant from happening though. And he'll be, be taken down as the rotation's caught by Fallen. Great spray! Now there's a couple lurkers towards that Ivy position, but the main brunt of the attack, the main attack is coming through to that B bomb site. And Ali's gonna spot the initial dart across there. Sergei's gonna take Mayen's head off. And you know what? MIBR call the abort. They're gonna wrap it back around towards the ladder room, combine with the Ivy players to snap onto that A bomb site. What are they going to be able to find, though, is the real question. X7 and company are still here left to defend this site, and they're getting a rotation out as well to the back halls. KNG, though, so far able to deal with that rotation through the back side. But Alu and Sunny now timing and putting a stop to this round very quickly. A very dominant performance here from the Finns on the pistol. That is one of the pitfalls of playing the slower style. If you're not finding picks early or getting, like, an early advantage, it causes you to get bogged down to a five-on-five five where everything kind of is at a standstill. No one's really moved very much. But they do get that kill onto Ladder Room, thanks to Taco coming over from the inner hall. So now they can start swinging into this outer bomb site, using the utility to keep pushing forward and more forward. KNG also finding a kill, and they might just get this bomb plant in time. Indeed, they should. There it is. Inner set piece here from Maiden Brazil. Plenty of utility to work with to get their way in. Just the one player up close to deal with, and he's been blinded out and taken care of with ease. So there's a one CT left here in the site that they'll have to clear out. They've already caught Ariel on the back tap. And everything's going swimmingly for Made in Brazil. A very efficient anti-eco, that has to be said. Even trying to farm some cash with this SMG from Fur. He's already gotten two kills with the MAC-10, so it's more than paid for itself already. I'm trying to see if he can't get a bit more. It seems like MIBR have a way better grasp of how to make their own T-side click. Yeah. So it, the work that they've been doing is very apparent, but hold that thought for a moment. The Flashbands come through to get themselves towards E-Box. KNG gets the initial trade. They're out there looking to frag, but it is Ents holding things down for the time being. Fallen has to save it. He's the only person with health or position at this point, and he is now the only man standing against four. The in-game leader looking to lead by example, as all eyes are on him, as everybody waits, staring at the death camp. Fallen is the one who still is out there trying to do some damage to the economy of Ents. That's really like a kill or two is perhaps his best case that he can hope for. See if they give him any edges. Absolutely not. Ali holds the angle and ends pick up another round. And when that first orb appears, you don't know when that's going to be. It's probably going to catch you out. And that's kind of the, po the point of it, I think, in many cases. And Seven goes really aggressive. He's been absolutely murdered by Mayan. That seemed really ill-advised, Dan. Oh uh, my god. I don't know about all that. That, that, uh, I'm not sure about that one. Hey, well, this is the wrong round, I think, for that to, for that play to be <laughs> called. That's unfortunate. That's I can't believe he committed even through the fire. Like, I mean, that was after this B play. It's a pretty good setup. They got a committed player on the bomb site. 
That is going to be Sunny by the coils, by the cogs. He's going to have to do a lot here. Sergey there with assistance. Great damage from the M4. He's still alive and kicking as is Sunny. He will get traded eventually, but he's done his job. Just two players left. They have to force the bomb plant. Sergey, does he go forwards? He's going to wait for his teammates. That bomb has been planted. Taco, one versus three on his hands. It's going to be a very tough situation to try to recover from. They know exactly where he is. There's only one way out of this situation, and it's headshots. Taco can't get the first one, and that will be the round for ends. Here we go, fast to play. Only one man playing B, but he's very far back. It's Sergei. He will not be able to stop the bomb plant. Spoilers. He'll be able to take position around oil to try to protect some position in this yard. But you can see that Fur's already up there underneath connector, and it's been smoked off. That means Sergei has a lot to do here. He'll get traded out by Fur, and that's that might be it. That might be game over. Yep. It, they can't get back into the bomb site. This is like the dream scenario on Inter Execute. This fur getting this deep towards Z, but while the bomb gets planted, getting so much space denied to Ents. Now they have no footing to go for this retake as quickly as they would like to, but they still find a way to break through anyhow. Ariel doubles up right there. May aren't able to respond and keep it even at a three on three, but Ents still do have the health advantage as they start pressing their way forward. They also might be able to use their utility to their advantage in the kit. Seven is able to find Taco Sun onto Mayern, and there oh. you have it. Ents actually still pulled that off. And he is going to very quickly hop out into Olaf, trying to run down. But Alu was waiting for that play. Actually does tag him, tries to finish it off with the nade. It misses, but he gets the op shot as a parting gift. But a couple of kills coming from A Brazil in the process. And they actually have a pretty big advantage because of it. Oh, oh. oh my god, he that's gets so a headshot. Crazy. That doesn't make any sense, to be honest. I think that's a crime. Put that man in prison. And now it's just Sergei left. Gonna have to be. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, Ants has still some work to do to try to get this into a third map. At least they do have the edge coming into the second half thanks to a nice little comeback there in the first half on their CT side. And they've done a lot of damage already early into this one. A couple of players are very, very low on health right now, and they're starting to get those entries they need over towards the center bomb site, as well as outer. They're pushing both sides at the same time very effectively. The bomb will be recollected there by Alu. Three on two now. They have full control of the interbomb site. Oh, nicely done. Fallen picks uh -oh. up one. It's a very, very labored fight. They have no idea about Ariel, actually, coming in from the fight. Oh, gets caught out off guard, but still has a headshot with the Glock, and it's going to be another round for ends. They picked up both pistols, actually. A smoke grenade as well. So this could be quite dangerous. We'll see if MIBR can offer anything up here. Oh, dear. That is not the start that Ents wanted. Mayor nails Ariel. In yeah. Brazil, discipline just staying back. And they're pushed ladder, and they have a lot of pressure towards inner site. Normally, a T side will go B in these scenarios. That's like very commonly what you'll do because you can, you don't have to worry about a lot of positions. You can just get onto a plant quickly. But they oh. try to take ladder room, and they'll get absolutely annihilated by the Deagle of Fur. The HE might finish him off. In fact, it did no damage, I think, even though it landed right behind him. There you go, Counter Strike HEs. But man will go down on the bomb site. But again, the bomb is still. On the ground at the ladder room, and Sonny, he can't make his way for it either. And the Deagles, they win the round. As Sergei's usually the first guy, and it's a boost that actually comes out and takes out Alu, so that's another problem to add to all that. Oh no, and Sonny's gonna have to go back there, it seems. Taco playing very close. Yep, and the ops support him from the back side as well. And Taco does go down though, with no kills to his name to show for it. But again, K and G had rotated already with the op, and he's able to find a kill keeps it an advantage for Maiden Brazil. This bomb is now finally getting planted, but it's coming at a cost of a lot of damage to these players thanks to an HE grenade. And first, why is this flank at Tcon? That's a huge bit of information, isn't it? They know where the other two players are, I think. So right. this is a huge problem. They're going to start moving forward for going for that flank. But oh, beautiful. They were starting to worry about Fur. They just heard his, him stepping. And that was all that was needed because then all the players, T's on the site, start turning around to Fur, leaving their backs exposed to Fur's teammates. And Sonny, he's just been left out in the cold here. The clock is ticking. They need to make a decision here quickly. They're going to try to go once again towards ladder. First shot them down last time. This time, a great timing on that flash will get them the control they need. And Fallen has to fall back, but there's Mayan close range. He picks up one, but Fallen goes down when he tries to reposition. The timing impeccable from Ents. And now it's down to Taco and KNG on the rotation. Oh, he oh. found actually the delay. That's actually pretty huge. 
There was some damage done though, and KMG in that distraction creeps forwards. He might find an opening, spines the shoulder. Oh, it's not quick enough, but he is still alive. He is still kicking, and there is still time to try to find a defuse on this bomb, but he has to bait these players into the open. Alu there whiffs the shot. And KMG, he needs to hit the shot of his life to take down one of these players, as they are not going to give him anything. Oh, there's the peak, it's a double peak, <laughs> it's another whiff, and that just can't happen. It's looking dead now for KNG. He might be able to escape with the orb if he's lucky, and looks like he'll be lucky this time. No harm, no foul on that, though. He might be thinking to maybe catch a second player that might try to peek as the first player basically right. does. Like, that's what the teams do, but it will be a trade towards ladder room. Ints is not going to be prepared for, and there it is. Gets the kill, gets the bomb down, still alive, still holding on. Might be able to even find oh. more. Indeed, a second taken care of by Taco. What a play by him to get the advantage for Made in Brazil. That's such a dirty play from Taco. It's a one and done spot. He gets two from it. And now there's been enough time for his teammates to get in position to get out of connector. And you can see Enzo will be stuck around the bomb train. KNG, oh no, it's X7. What a fantastic shot. Finding Fallen there. Now KNG will creep forwards. Enz looking pretty good here to maybe convert this one. It's X7. Oh no, the timing. Poor X7. Couldn't have been worse on that timing. Alu now is up to him. Coming in from this upper position. A whiff from KMG. And that gives Alu a uh -oh. chance here. He's going to pull out the knife here. Going for the shot. Beautiful. Alu knows how to close it out. Yeah, damage exchanged for both sides. But no one's really found a foothold just yet in the round. Fallen though. Spotting T's dropping around t Khan And does dispatch of Alu. Nice headshot there from him. Doing the extra damage. Now the first assistant towards Ivy. Misses but still alive. Still buying time. Still holding his ground. And there's another one onto Ariel. Again, Fallen known for how he handles the pressure of being closed on. When his back's against the wall, he can deliver. And he's going to continue to do so with KNG's assistance as well, leaving Sunny all by his lonesome. That is what he does. That is who he is from that position. A power player and KNG is going to jump across the angle. He was the guy who had HP. Fallen and Taco don't have almost any to their name. And there is some time here for Sunny to try to work them out. But they know where he is. There's only two potential avenues that he can now emerge from. And this is one of those two. And Fallen's on that position. Who better to close the round down with one single point of health? Thank you, production. Did I pronounce it right? That's yeah. Tough. Thank you. And here goes the push straight into the outer bombsite once again, trying to capitalize on the chaos and falling up on top of the train. And, oh, I think he actually connected that indeed, Sergei, down to 4 HP. And now Fallen now will slither away back towards the hell position. And Parker has now made his presence known. He's the only one standing. He's got to win this fight to try to gain access to the A site. He's able to creep through, or maybe not, actually, after I say that, he will get taken out by Ariel. CT's playing passive over towards Ivy and Bomb Train, but Fallen does have that AWP. It's going to be hard to deal with him, and he's already going to find one. It's a good shot, but sitting by Sandwich. No one's found him. He gets another one. That is a huge problem. They'll eventually take down Fallen, and Sunny does find Fur as well. That is a miracle. It feels like there's a chance they're still in this one. Sergey, 10 seconds left that bomb. I don't think he's going to have time to plant this one. He now doesn't have any time at all. He's trying to wrap around the red train, but... It's not going to happen. He's just going to have to get out of there. Hold on to the weapon. And it looks like MIBO will pick it up. That's going to prop him to plot the incendiary to try to slow down this push a little bit so he can focus his aim over towards the ladder. Try to keep all angles covered as best as possible with these three players. And Fur taking care of things over at Ivy. A couple of big kills there from him. Ariel is able to trade it back and was looking for Fallen as well there for a moment. Sergey in the meantime has found a way to flex himself into outside. He finds his kill also, but only one. Fallen quickly trades him back and now it's all on Ariel. Running out of time and out of health. It might seem, as there's two CTs left against him. Tried his damnedest, but it's just not enough in Main Brazil. Series point now in front of them. And you have to respect this for Main Brazil. They have to kind of do things like this to try to fight their way back in the round, and it might just work out. Taco, though, being spotted by Aerial. It's going to clear out the inner bomb site. It's wide open now. No one's here left defending. Did that an unexpected angle from, with the orb to get that early 5v4, but they don't get it. Nor did Alu, with because Alu got a chance too. So, oh, there's the toasting pole drop. And Ferg dies again. He's not having success against that. No, indeed he's not. He's, he's, he's lost it more often than he's won battles there. That's for sure. That's really helped out Ents on a couple of different occasions. It could be yet the same story in this round. Mayer and also just gets caught on a bad timing. He was caught between two mines, and Ariel is going to sniff him out. It's all on Fallen, Taco, and KNG now against five Int members, most of which are now pressing into his inner sight. Taco left alone with the Deagle, trying his best to buy time, find kills where he can, but no one's really giving him a look.
In the meantime, Fallen's been training out with KNG. Alu with another kill, and it's not looking good. It's looking like OT. Fallen's still alive, though, with the AWP, and he's making his way in. No support. It's a man in an AWP. And he will go down. Overtime has indeed been secured. And so finally started to find some great solutions here. A quick trade inner will create problems for MIBR. It's certainly a more favorable scenario for the T side. That is for certain when you get a 4v4 like this with so much time on the clock. You see, uh, you know, the T side can just kill the clock a little bit and reset the situation. And look at this push. Fallen has a disadvantage here on this angle. And Ouch. as you can see, yeah, X7 had a better, he had the scope as well, so. Look at the delay here from and They have to be so careful that they don't put themselves in a bad position by delaying so much. Really trying to make it look like a B play, keep the players on B, but you can see that MIBR understand that this is a fake at this point, and Ends are moving fairly slowly. It's still, I mean, they will have three players. You're pretty close to the A-bomb trend at this point. But looking to hold on to that. If, if I can keep this position, that's going to cause problems. Because then they'll have coverage of both sides of the bomb train. Kenji getting closer, emerging from old bomb, goes for the play, quick scope onto Ariel, and now tapping the bomb. They ha someone has to go out and peek this. But no one's going to peek it, they don't believe, they don't believe, they are non-believers. Oh my god, the timing from Sunny is perfect. And there you go, the clean sweep, 18-15. What can they find with it now though? Orping this position is really interesting. If he drops down and no scopes aerial, I will lose it. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I can't. That's just fallen, isn't it? Just in a nutshell. I'm glad you didn't risk a, something more, it you know, a, dangerous yeah. with that call. You, you only it just was, risked I, that you would lose it, which it, is a very abstract, yeah. you know, and it was call. A, so. It was a quick scope as well. Yeah. So. It wasn't quite risky. That's just, yeah. what on earth do you do against that? That's just, I don't know. Oh no, X7's getting caught out here as well. Surely he'll get flanked. There it is. Coming out of T main, fur with a vengeance. And now they got the 4v3. They have 30 seconds to plant the bombs. So that's, an, that's enough time. It is indeed enough time unless someone starts dropping some kills, which could be Sunny already hanging out here on the bomb train, waiting for that very moment so he can strike when he's most needed. But look at these T's swarming from all directions, really starting to put the pressure on Sunny. But Sunny so far has been up to the task. He's continuing to dish out blows left and right to Maiden Brazil. It's only now two standing, trying to plant this bomb. Mayern has to fake it, wheeling around the bomb train. Does find Sergey, but time is so low, and Alu is oh so close to him. As he comes out the smoke, but Mayern spots it, but can't get the kill. That there is going to be some presence towards Long A, which is certainly going to help them make decisions on how they want to rotate and how they want to bundle up together and you can see so many CTs concentrated over here towards Connector. So far, equal exchanges break out in the bathrooms, but KNG looking to take the advantage he does. And nicely done, the trades go somewhat evenly here, and now it's time to try to get that bomb to a bomb site. but they're cut off from an ability to do so. Taco there. Oh, go! Oh, nice shots coming through from him, and also Fallen to finish it off. It was... Some forward control here towards bathrooms, towards... Divider as the push comes through Monster as well. Sunny, wow. nice headshot there on the KNG, but Mayern there able to follow up. Swaps out for the AK. The smoke back down to keep that position. Fallen might get lucky here on this peek into short. There is one player right here on the sidewalk. Oh. He flicks up for it, gets it back into a two versus two. This could be absolutely devastating if Inf let this round go when they were up 5v2. That's actually a good couple of smokes to create space. Fallen playing around the side here. This is a really good angle, but still, X7. Stunning shot. We'll take Fallen down. Now it's up to Mayen as he begins to walk his way up the short position. And again, Ents don't know precisely where he can come from. They've got some good positions, but no one's looking for this. Oh no, maybe Ali will have it in the, in the, in the right moment, because I think he actually wasn't looking for the longest time. But the lavatory. There we go, first, we'll get challenged. Good support from Fallen there, gets the double on the defense here, and Ensa no better off, it seems, in terms of positioning. But there is a forward position, and that's Fallen with that M4. He's fairly weak, but he, let's see if he'll go unchecked here. It's a, an off angle that he's playing. And that's a really good way to have Fallen get a one and done here. Oh, beautiful, turns around. And that is gonna be the round over with. Very nice holds, good setup from MIBR there. Some counter utility will be dished out to try to slow down the aggression. Meanwhile, first is picked off at A. Ariel now finally entering into B. Everything's gone wrong for Maiden Brazil. What a swift 
and beautiful attack from Ents there. Firing at all cylinders are the Fins in this round. All on Fallen. Not much he can do but save the op, and he might not even get to do that. Oh my god, he's gonna get badly hunted here. <laughs> They are going to go hard on that connector control and the early B defense here, and they're going to be right to do so because in comes that huge B play. Taco swapping out the weapon there. Beautiful work from him. He's absolutely cracked the push. There's no entry at all through Monster. Smart stuff from Ali. Oh, so close there. He has no idea how close he was to a kill. Maybe he does. Yep. And, they, and once Ali gets a little bit further forward, they can come up of uh, the connect position and move forwards, but Taco, in the meantime, he's not letting them sit on this control and the trades come through, but it's not going to favor MIBR at all here. They're two versus three. Seems to be where the T's are gathering up, so he has a chance to maybe make a huge play. And there is the first kill, but can he continue? He's staying alive for quite a bit, but again, just not able to find that multi-kill he needed. And it seems like this one might be over with. Maybe. Fallen is moving forwards with the or with the M4, not with the orb. Ali's on the AWP. <gasps> Ali's been annihilated by Fallen there. That's a beautiful burst. That's the only way you can maybe try to win this one. And he finds Sunny. Sunny had no idea. Like heavier connector and short B play, and, and only that one guy A, Alu, with the AWP solo. Fallen here at connector. Oh, misses that incendiary just a little bit, but it still does stop the push coming up into middle. And Mayern has found that kill onto Alu with that aggressive positioning over on the A side of the map. They take over Playground as well. B is a bit vulnerable though, as the tank isn't going to come this direction. Taco though, doing a lot of damage, gets a kill as well. Seven there, feels like he has lots to do, especially now that KNG is threatening the flank. They've got to feel like every position is being destabilized right now, but that's a great headshot from Sergei. Dealing with the flanking player, out he goes for another, but it's all up to X7 now, one versus three, AK in hand, as they start to bear down on his position. He knocks down one, he's got the second, there's just one more to go. It's falling with the AWP, he's pressuring the bomb, and X7, he's done it! It's really cool as well that it's like the turning points of these clutches. This big clutch is fallen, and then X7 is... It's great to see, and oh man, what? getting some deagle kills here, the one rifle from fallen is going to find some value towards Short feet, it seems, and Ooh. and there you go, Taco, with that deagle again, and suddenly there's only two players left. And Sonny seems like he realizes what might be there, but he focuses on sight instead. It's an even trade. KNG trying to lock things down, but Alu says nay, finds the bomb, and has a chance to win the one versus one. He will get this plant. He plants for bank, and while he has low health, he's going to be able to get some good post plant positioning. I would love for him to go up on dice. Oh no, he gets spotted on the cross through the gap in the smoke. Ooh, the shadow. There's the flashbang for, you don't often see the boost setups too commonly, but this time they'll run it and this time it'll work. Will they run it again? Hard to say, but. Here it is. There's the bait, Paul is making a lot of noise, and there's Fur, his position revealed, he gets two, and then in the distraction, Fallen plays off of that to pick up a frag of his own. That setup has worked out way too well. Ali with a nice, precise headshot, but there is still much more to be done. He has no time at all, has to fall back. Will Ariel backstab? Will he just flank late to try to cut off the retake? There's so many options. Really killing the clock here. They've got that lurk set up outside long. The presence stepping is heard by Fur. They'll peak, and he doesn't win the fight. KNG with a quick trade. That means everything. A man goes close to the smoke. They're going to have to go through this. He knows that he's going to get the spray out. Gets himself a double headshot. Taco there for support. We'll shut it all down. And there's nothing left on that B-bomb site. And that's a 9-6 finish for MIBR. And MIBR, they're looking pretty damn good at the end of that first half dust. Absolutely. A great, strong finish for Made in Brazil to give them a pretty nice lead coming into the pistol here. The second half, they waste no time plowing into D, but they're meeting some really stiff resistance from Sunny and Ariel. Sunny with three, in fact. I'm just, just dancing around. Yeah. Delaying the inevitable pass, and indeed, Genji will go down. But we'll see if interrupts the task. Sergey has some nice positioning here up close, but he might get caught on the fade back. All comes down to timing, and yes, indeed, he's taking a lot of damage, but he's able to get away into connector at the very least, and Alu has his back. But unfortunately, not for long, as KNG's Deagle will break out, but somehow Sergey survives, and he's still going. What, what is happening? How is Sergey still in this fight? Finally, Taco deals with him, but at a, such a huge cost. Yeah, he got a dink onto Taco as well. 
Oh, he has an MP5. And he's going to nail the tagged player. So 3v2 towards that A-bomb site now. They're going to close in on Ariel. He's been pretty phenomenal this series. He's got a lot to do with here. And that smoke is actually going to isolate a 1v1 for Ariel. He's loving that. He will eventually go down to the scouts. And now Sonny on the flank. They don't know where he is. But now this, well, they found out now. So what can they do about it? Sonny. Is he going to take the long way around? That actually probably won't work out too well for him. There is a two-man long setup ready, but if he can catch him on the surprise, he can't. Very clever from Fallen. He's checking for that. Now Sonny has to force the issue at the front of the bomb site. This is going to be desperate now. Not much you could really hope for at this point if you're Sonny. Awkward <laughs> is the <laughs> best word to come up with on that situation. And it is going to be made in Brazil hitting double digits pretty soon. Oh, man. It feels bad, man. <laughs> he gets stinked, and then he just... I think he just walked into the first bullet of another full bang attempt. Marco, though, with the flashbang, that's worked out really well. Explosive effort, changing up the pace to great effect, to great impact. And they've got the bomb down. They've got the 3v2 after plant. Ents are out of position. The flank is coming from Alu. Mm. But how much is it going to do? Nothing, I would imagine, now, as he's all alone. And they have all their bases covered here in this post lane game. Still, you almost wonder if Alu just back off, but no, he tries to take a fight that he cannot win KNG with the SG. Hold of that sewers position. They don't have any connector presence. So it does indicate to me that they're going to commit towards the deep bomb site. Look at that, X7. He has a lineup or two. He's practiced that one, that's for sure. He's going to get himself a freebie. And that also tells him that they are taking this position quickly, which is right. a tell towards this B take. And they're going to go straight in first. Oh my god, he has no respect at all. Straight in there looking for those frags. And Mayan's going to finish things off. It's still, though, they don't have full control of the site. They're going to get the bomb down, but they're losing players. Mayan, surely he can't get off the plant. And he won't. To fall in now. Reset the situation. There's the first frag. He's got almost no HP left, and he can't finish the job. Great flashbangs, really doing their work, but blinding the teaser as well. They can't quite get the engagement, and there's a defensive boat getting laid down by the CTs. And now 3v3, Sunny. He's got a lot of work on his hands here. He's got to do something. He needs to get a kill, hold on to the water position as well. It's a fine line to walk, but Sunny is the man to do it. As he looks to edge his way forward, looking for that first kill, trying to take things as safely as possible. As he holds his position, letting his teammates work around him, but there is at least the trade set up by Alu. As he pulls that nade out, now it's up to Fur with the Deagle in hand. As Zen's try to swing through, they want to coordinate this one. They want to make it so Fur cannot isolate one of them, and that's exactly what will happen. Sergei will take him out here towards mid and bathrooms, and Alu gets caught there. A great timing peek by KNG with a nice flash for support. Will be laid down back onto the monster tunnel. Here for the CTs, and there they go. The swing is pretty good, actually, from my MYBR around the pillar. X7 to jump straight through the smoke and back in again as he tries to escape, but there is no escape. It's up to Sergei. Eight seconds left. They've got to stop the plant here, and he will be eliminated. Sergei goes down in the round for MIBR. Match point for MIBR. And staring down the barrel of pure brute force gets them into series point. Alu takes his up towards Monster. It's a new look, but he misses a big opportunity. No harm, no foul, he gets away, but that could have gave his team an advantage, and now it allows Made Brazil to spill out, and they're straining their way into B, and is holding on for dear life, though, and they're getting the kills they need. It's all on Fur. He's found one, but it's the 1v1 against Sunny. It's all gonna come down to this, and Fur, he's done it.